Fallout 76 has a lot of locations. If you've played the game, you'll realize the map is quite literally four times the size of Fallout 4's. So in this video, I'm going to help you get a better grasp on the map and show you some interesting unmarked locations or things that are kind of hidden within other locations. Many of these are very easily missed and some of them actually seem to indicate DLC plans, but a couple are mixed in just because I think it would be a really cool place to have your camp. Either way though, if you guys do enjoy the video, you can leave a like or subscribe. Starting things off though, we do have the Fujinya Intelligence Base, and I'm probably butchering that name. I'll bet a lot of you guys have actually seen this one, but there's a few interesting parts about it that you may have missed. So if you guys aren't familiar, this is actually going to be a secret Chinese intelligence base that was under Mama Dolce's. Basically, they were spying on the surrounding area and actually had a cover with Mama Dolce's itself. In order to get into it, you're going to have to find the manager's ID card on a desk on the second story of Mama Dolce's. But from there, you do have this fully fledged base. It is a pretty Pretty cool location to begin with. It's where I cite that you could actually find a 10 millimeter SMG pretty consistently. But out of the secret locations I'm showing you, this is probably going to be the most well known. It's also very well fleshed out. But a few of the things in this little secret base, I think, indicate some DLC plans for Fallout 76, perhaps something around a Chinese DLC. So one of the first things that is interesting to me are these ID card slots on some of the cage doors. You can actually get into these doors by using the terminal, but there also is this ID card slot that seemingly has no ID card to go along with it. Or at least based on my own experience and reading online, I haven't found one instance of somebody actually discovering an ID card that goes here. But where I think this really gets confirmed is if you read some of the terminal entries here, you'll find that there were shipments coming to this location. The officer swords did arrive successfully, but a few that were delayed were the Type 93 assault rifle, some ammo for it, and also a stealth armor. If you're not familiar, the stealth armor is the Chinese stealth suit, and the Type 93 assault rifle is the Chinese assault rifle that we do have in Fallout 3. Well, textures for the Chinese assault rifle have been found in the files of Fallout 76, so it very likely is something we will have in the future through the form of DLC. That coupled with this mysterious ID card and all of these references to the stealth suit makes me think that will be coming along with it. Even beyond that, in another terminal down here, you could actually find out that they were trying to advance the stealth suit, but they didn't have a reference model to build on, which makes me think that could be a role we actually play when this eventually does come out. But moving on, we also do have the true location of Sickleman. If you're unfamiliar, Sickleman was seemingly some kind of killer in Appalachia before the Great War. There's an unmarked cabin just a ways away from Vault 76, where if you actually successfully get into it, you're going to find a variety of different things, all markers that he was here. Predominantly, a variety of skulls and skeletons in different places. The hot tub is always a nice touch for that kind of stuff. But even beyond that, as you work your way through the house and actually down into what was a basement, you can find the famous Sickleman was here. This is pretty notable because it was one of the first screenshots we actually had of Fallout 76 tweeted on the official Fallout Twitter account. But that of course leaves the question, who is Sickle Man? Or even, what is Sickle Man? There's no obvious clues or notes here that will lead you to the next location, but there actually is a clue at that location that may indicate his real identity. On the way, other side of the map, you're going to find this little house off a road that is kind of in the middle of nowhere. There's not a whole lot else going on here, and you may have just never been to this location. You can see what looks like a police car in the driveway, of course destroyed now, also a scarecrow as you approach the house. And as you make your way inside, you're going to find what looks like a woman holding a giant sickle and actually with a ton of skulls around her and then all throughout the house you're going to find additional evidence that this was the real identity of the sickle man who in reality might have been a sickle woman honestly there's not a lot else going on here no interesting notes or anything like that at least i couldn't find any but moving on you guys have probably seen at least somewhat of the mothman cult in fallout 76 specifically at the mothman museum seems to be the site with the most exposure well, if you want a deeper dive into their backstory, you should head over to the Lucky Hole Mine, right on the border of the Cranberry Bog. In here, you're going to find a lot more to the Mothman Coal, and actually quite a few notes to go along with it, although they're fairly cryptic, definitely not in plain English. As you guys progress further and further into this mine, you'll find increasing amounts of evidence that this was one of the main locations of this group of individuals, or maybe even just their headquarters. And I'm sure quite a few of you guys have actually been here and seen it. This is where you could actually get some of the cultist daggers and blades, and honestly, it is a pretty cool location in and of itself, but something interesting if you have explored here. If you go over to the edge of the room and look through those little waterfalls, it almost looks like there's more of a room back there, definitely a lot more going on. 
Something a lot of people may have missed as you're actually walking into the entrance of the larger room, there's a little slit in the wall almost blocked by a plant that actually allows you to go behind that larger room and behind that waterfall. It seems like this might have been a personal room for one of the leading members of this organization. You can find some decent loot in here, but even beyond that, on the chalkboard you could find what is some interesting writing that may suggest as to how these guys got to be the way they did or why they believe what they do. I'm not sure that stuff is FDA approved. Do you guys remember Car? from Fallout 4, the location of that very obnoxious and frustrating super mutant behemoth. Well, Garhenge has actually made a return in Fallout 76, and I wouldn't be surprised if most of you guys haven't been here. Considering I couldn't find any explicit writing as to where this location was, I just spent probably a half hour to an hour wandering around in the wilderness trying to find it. But hey, now you guys know it's at this exact location, and it's going to be fairly similar to the Carhenge of Fallout 4. You'll find some various high-level enemies here. I found a bunch of fog crawlers that had some really good loot and also a bunch of scorched fighting them. But after clearing those guys out, I think this car henge is definitely a bit nicer. It seems like Bethesda may have made some upgrades to this one. I mean, beyond that, it has a really nice throne that you can take advantage of in the middle of it. One pretty cool aspect though is you could actually build your camp here. It is a placeable location and this is definitely a cool way to impress your friends. Building around car henge, actually maybe even making a shrine to car henge to the gods that have created this for us. Either way, it is a really cool location that really doesn't have too much information about it out there. But actually right around Carhenge, there's this other really interesting cave and there's not a ton going on in the cave itself, but it also is a place you could place your camp down. It literally is just a cave in the middle of nowhere and I could already think of some really awesome base ideas. I'm sure there's some of you that knew about this and are now pissed I'm exposing it to more people, but either way, it's a really cool spot in the middle of nowhere to actually call home. But let's say all of that was pretty boring to you. I actually have one that was kind of hiding in plain sight. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you guys know about this, but a vast majority of you never knew this existed. If you look on the map in Fallout 76, you can see a yellow road that runs through most of the Cranberry Bog. Many of you have probably even ran across this road, but did you know there's actually a tunnel under that road that goes all the way from this workshop to Watoga? It's a really long tunnel, and periodically, especially as you get closer and closer to Watoga, there's side entrances that you can get into. But what I've found, if you are out of caps or really low on caps like me, it's a really good way to get around without having to encounter too many enemies. Oftentimes, there's a lot of other stuff going on above this little tunnel, but you could remain hidden and safe within it. But even beyond that, for about 60% of this, you could actually place your own camp down, and this is another really cool location to set up shop. It is right in the middle of the Cranberry Bog, so around a lot of other valuable locations, but with this one, you could definitely keep your base hidden, which is a pretty cool aspect of it. And then there's one final one that I couldn't confirm myself, despite trying very hard to. This image was recently posted on Reddit. Seemingly, a alien spaceship is monitoring the spawn of the Scorch Beast Queen and the ensuing fallout that does come along with the nuke you launch here. That seems really freaking cool, yet I went to this site after launching the nuke on the Scorch Beast Queen and looked around in the air for probably 20 minutes. I couldn't see any spaceships, so I'm not sure if this screenshot is just some kind of elaborate hoax or maybe a Photoshop. It honestly doesn't really look like it. Or alternatively, maybe this is actually just a random timed event that only happens some of the time and in my instance it didn't. But either way, that seems really cool and there's a lot of speculation that we'll see some kind of alien DLC. There's certainly some alien testing and alien undertones in this game and that's certainly a theme Bethesda has explored in past games so I wouldn't be surprised if they do it again. Especially with the actual spaceship location that is seemingly barren and in need of some kind of additional content. But otherwise, those are all the interesting or cool locations I found that hopefully you guys think are cool and maybe even some of them you'll go and set up camp or just explore for yourselves. One thing I really noticed while filming this video, because I've made similar ones, or honestly identical ones, for Fallout 4, Fallout 76 really has a severe lack of interesting unmarked locations. In Fallout 4, it just seemed like a lot of those locations had a lot more backstory through notes and terminals, where in Fallout 76, I could find something that looked cool, but a lot of the time it was fairly basic or really not of all that much interest. Hopefully this is something Bethesda flushes out in the future. They have this really big and beautiful map, and I would love to get some more content within it, actually make it a little bit more dense. But before we end things off, I do want to say a big thank you. This is going to be my last video of 2018 and actually ever. Now I'm just kidding. I'm going to show you my top five mods of 2018 tomorrow for Fallout 4. But just in general, it's been a massive year for the channel. A lot of ups 
and downs and just thank you for sharing it with me. Come 2019, I have a lot of really cool stuff coming, even just in January. A lot of different things, things that I haven't been doing over the past month. And I think a lot of you guys are going to really like what is coming, even if you don't like Fallout 76 or alternatively, even if you love Fallout 76. As tacky as it does sound, this year has been an incredible journey and pretty much all of it I have to thank all of you for that are watching and continue to watch. So hopefully 2019 is only greater, hopefully we get some new games to cover, hopefully we get some more improvements to Fallout 76, and hopefully we get a lot of cool Fallout 4 mods. As always again, I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.